I always loved composing uh, growing up, and it was sort of a thing at high school. It was it was it was a pretty musical school, but I was one of the sort of big composers there, and I would write music for high school plays, and um, would write music for all sort of things, and I'd produce it. At the time, I used to use Ableton Live to produce my music. I'd write it on Sibelius, and then I'd produce it. Nowadays, I use Cubase. When I went to university in England, I got a little daunted, and. It was partly because I was surrounded by so many great student composers and I just thought, I'm, I'm never going to be able to match this. And um, it's partly because I was just discovering so much music by many of my favourite composers, you know, the greats of Western art music. And I thought, how can you ever, how can I ever write anything that comes close to, to, to the music that these greats have written? And so I sort of gave up fully because I thought, there's no way I'm ever going to be one of these great geniuses in music. Um, but recently I got back into it. I'm not... I just decided I'm not even going to try and be one of the great composers. I'm just going to do it because I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy making music. And I use Cubase um, now and and a pen and paper or pencil and paper and score music. Uh, there are a few thoughts that I wanted to talk about. And I've they've been kind of going around in my head. And I thought I'd just riff them here. Um, three different ideas. And they relate particularly to film music but also just three different ways of working in composition. So first is the traditionalist way, or the John Williams way. Uh, and what he does, he's, John Williams is a fantastic pianist, the great film composer I'm talking about here. He, Juilliard trained pianist. If it would be convenient to go into the call. Yeah. I like that. As a matter of fact, it seems like a very natural transition. Yeah. He, um, he is a man who uses pencil and paper because that's the way he's trained. But not only that, he doesn't try and score a whole film, um, you know, instrument by instrument all at the same time. He, from what I've watched in videos and documentaries and things, will start with piano. He'll find his themes on the piano and he'll work for a long time uh, using just a piano. And actually what he says is... He'll start with the end credits first, and that's because probably it gives him a lot of freedom to work out what the big themes of his piece are going to be. Um, so he can work out all the major themes, light motifs, how a sort of ABA structure might work in those themes and things. He doesn't have to fit it to picture because it's the credit sequence, and so he can write his he can write his credit suite first, and then he can use the material he's written in the credit suite. Um, to, uh, to, to score the rest of the film. And then, you know, the, the material he's used from the credit suite can then be timed to picture and can be varied and altered and developed in different ways. Uh, but moreover, he's using pencil and paper. One of the, the drawbacks of pencil and paper is it means you really do need some classical training. Uh, you really do need to, you know, train your ear because you don't want to be spending forever working it out. You need to train your ear and you need to have that classical training to know how to do that appropriately. The benefits is I often find nowadays working, composing direct to computer can be as much a roadblock as it is a um, you know, great access point. Uh, it, can, it can put you off in the sense that I think there's something magical about going on a walk somewhere or just getting away from the computer altogether and simply having old fashioned pencil and paper where you can, your only limitation is your imagination. Whereas when you're typing things into a computer, when you're plugging things in or virtual instruments or whatever, you get immediate feedback. In a way, in a way that blocks your imagination because you're immediately hearing what you're putting in before you've had a chance to sort of let your imagination run free. Whereas if you're out in the countryside with a pencil and paper, or if you're out on the beach or something where these great, you know, Benjamin Britten or these great old composers would have composed, Edward Algar on the hills, you know, he, he has the beauty of the Cotswold Hills to inspire him and he can just write everything that's being inspired straight down on pencil and paper. Moreover, John Williams um, will then take his sketches and write them in a sort of sketch orchestration form. So he'll have six or eight staffs of orchestra instead of 30 staffs. He'll have six or eight staffs. The top ones will be winds, then below that might be brass and um, some percussion, maybe a piano or harp, and then the bottom two or three will be strings. And so this means that you don't have to fill out every single instrument one at a time, which would really 
take a lot of time. That would be kind of time wasting. Instead, you can sketch out the orchestration and you can still be very accurate with how you're orchestrating, but you don't need to write out every single line. And then he'll hand it to his orchestrator if he's not orchestrating it himself. And his orchestrator will ex you know, expand that and fill in each individual part. So I think that orchestral sketch thing, if you have the classical training, is um, a pretty valuable tool. On the opposite side, so that was the traditionalist side, on the opposite side is the um, modern 21st century way of composing, or that the Hans Zimmer style, where Hans Zimmer has his MIDI keyboard and he has a metric ton of virtual instruments. And from that, he can simply plug in ideas and hear them directly. And what Hans Zimmer does is he, see, he says on many interviews that he'll spend the first several weeks of writing for a film because he has that luxury of time. He'll spend the first week or many weeks writing a long suite. And what that suite is, is basically just a catalogue of ideas. He'll just plug in ideas, he'll explore, and, and not just musical ideas, but sonic ideas as well. That's one of the benefits of working with computers and microphones instead of just pencil and paper. You can really explore and experiment with sonic ideas and distort them and change them and do all kinds of things. But he'll make this journal of ideas and he says he doesn't, he doesn't um, ever go back and change them. Each day he's adding more and more to this journal or to this suite of ideas. And so, um, you know, after a few weeks of that, you have masses of material and some of that you can, you, you never have to use again. Some of that you might want to use. And so when he goes into the film, he's thought about it a lot and he's experimented with it a lot by plugging in, playing ideas onto his computer and, 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 and recording, uh, recording sonic ideas as well. And so once he comes finally to scoring to picture, he's played with all these ideas and, and, and it's similar to the John Williams thing of writing a credit sequence that John Williams writes his credits first and then he has all his themes in his head and so he can go on with um, he can go on with writing to picture. And in the same way, Hans Zimmer has spent weeks writing this suite of many ideas for, say, uh, Interstellar or something. And then he can go to the film and be like, let's use this idea that I wrote or like, let's alter this idea that I wrote. And he can, he can make new ideas with that. Uh, and that's a great way too. Uh, and that's obviously a slightly different, similar in some ways, but on another way, a very different way from the John Williams way. Then the third way is a sort of middle ground. John Powell, the composer who um, a lot of people have asked me to cover How to Train Your Dragon. I'm sorry, I haven't done that yet, but um, phenomenal orchestral composer, John Powell, and does a lot of animation films. And he... Uh, and I think he's, he's done a Star Wars film recently as well. And he has a YouTube channel. And on there you can find how he starts from sketches right the way to sort of the final product in the recording studio. And he'll start with three or four pianos and um, in, his, in his MIDI recording. So he'll record it right onto the computer. He might sketch it with paper and pen as well, I don't know. But he'll record it right into the computer um, with three or four pianos. And this means that there can be multiple layers. And that's why John's, John Powell's music is so richly layered. And you can start with one piano for, say, melody, and another, another piano for layer two, another piano for layer three, and you can have these really rich dynamic layers of lots of different things happening in the music with just three or four pianos. Then from there, John Powell um, orchestrates it, mocks it up in his mock orchestra. Follow this on his YouTube channel as well. You can follow what he does with a certain track from How to Train Your Dragon. And finally, once he's mocked it up in his um, in his MIDI orchestra, in his virtual orchestra, then it's written out in proper traditional parts so that the real orchestra can play it. So it's kind of reverse John Williams. John Williams will start with pencil and paper and then it will be turned into a real orchestra eventually. Whereas um, John Powell seems to, I might be wrong, but John Powell seems to start with piano sketches and then MIDI orchestra and then finally the real orchestra. So it's kind of a backwards version of John Williams. But it's a, I, in that sense, I see John Powell as a kind of in-between John Williams and Hans Zimmer, where Hans Zimmer is working purely sonically, largely with computer and then with experiments with microphones. <laughs> Whereas John Williams is working with his imagination and traditional orchestration. John Powell is somewhere in the middle where he, he's doing a lot of traditional orchestration things 
and um, also mixing that up with the benefits of the modern you know, MIDI orchestra and, and virtual orchestras on computers. So there's merits to all three things, but I just thought it was, it was food for thought how these three different great film composers work. If you enjoyed this and want to support this channel, then you can visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash inside the score. And I take questions and answers and, 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 and uh, suggestions for videos on my Patreon page. And I hope to cover them when when's convenient. So uh, thanks very much for watching and hopefully see you soon.